Today's lecture is on image compression. In image compression, the goal is to reduce the amount of data for transmission or storage. And we try to preserve information so that the image can be reconstructed. And if it can be reconstructed uh, exactly, we call that lossless compression. Or if it only can be re reconstructed approximately, we call it lossy compression. In this example, uh, the original image was about 1.4 megabytes, and the compressed image is about um, 0.3 megabytes. So we can express the degree of compression by taking the original image size, uh, in this case 1.4 megabytes, divided by the compressed size, about 0.3. So a ratio of about 5 to 1 in this case. So to achieve compression, we're going to take advantage of redundancy in the input image. And we'll look at three types of redundancy. The first type is coding redundancy, as illustrated by this figure. So this is an image with 8-bit gray levels, but only, two, only a few of the gray levels are present. Um, there's a dark gray, medium, light, and kind of a white here. So four gray levels out of a total possibility of 256. So we're going to see that we can represent these values by shorter code words instead of the full 8 bits. Another type of redundancy is spatial or temporal redundancy. Uh, this image is peculiar because every row is exactly the same value. So if we know the uh, first column of this image, the pixel value there, we can predict the entire row. So that is an example of spatial redundancy. If we had an image sequence, a sequence of images where the values were the same between each uh, image or just changed slightly, that would be an example of temporal redundancy. And finally, this one here uh, we call irrelevant information. So this image um, contains some gray levels, but they're mostly clustered around the value 128. So if we were to simply replace the entire image by the values of 128, it would look exactly the same. So the little bit of additional information there um, is not relevant to a human viewer. Okay, let's first look at coding redundancy, where we want to use short code words instead of long words. And um, what we can do is we can use variable length codes so that the most common values have the shortest codes. And remember that the way we compute the average of a quantity L, let's say, is by taking the probability of that value uh, times the value and summing all that up. So the average bit length for this whole image would be the length of code word R sub K times the probability of code word R sub K. So this is a uh, example histogram from um, that previous example where we had four gray levels. So here are the four probabilities. And um, the most straightforward code is to represent it as 8-bit values as shown here. But a uh, variable length code might represent it this way. So let's compute the um, average bit length for the uh, variable length code. If I take the um, uh, length of each code word, in this case it will be a 2 for the first one times 0.25 probability plus 1 times 0.47 plus 3 times 0.25 and plus uh, 3 times 0.03. So this comes out to be uh, 1.81 bits. So this is quite a bit shorter than, than the original 8-bit. And in fact, this one has a compression ratio of um, 8 over 1.81, which is about 4.4. Uh, Um, one way to measure information, um, we're going to look at how to do that. Um, so we're going to compute the theoretical minimum number of bits needed to code an image. And first we need to consider some uh, concepts from probability. So first consider an event E. Put this 
pointer back. So it could be, let's say, a coin flip. If the event is unlikely to happen, it has a small probability p of e, and the, the 1 over p of e would be large. So when the event does occur, it's significant and provides a lot of information. We can define the self-information of an event e as the log of 1 over the probability, log base 2 that is, so that um, when this is a uh, very large number, we get a lot of bits essentially from this. So uh, the log of 1 over a quantity is the same as the negative log of the quantity. So we have negative log base 2 of the probability. So, <coughs> so this is how much information is attached to the event E. <coughs> as an example, um, if the probability of the event is 1, then the information is zero, carries no information because we already know it's going to happen. If the probability is a half, the information carried by each event is one bit, basically yes or no, heads or tails. And if it's a fourth, the information of an event is two bits and so forth. So let's say we have a set of random events and that these events can have the possible values a1 through a sub j. So we're going to call these source symbols and they could be randomly generated by a transmitter. And the probabilities of the generating these symbols, assume we know that, is p of a sub 1, a2, etc. So the information carried by a single symbol is negative log of the probability, as we saw before. Now, if we want to compute the average of something, remember how we do that, we just sum the quantity times the probability, add them all up, and, and we get this. So this is the average information per symbol. So here's the quantity we want to measure the average of, and here's the probabilities, and we're adding up all the possibilities here. So we actually call this the entropy, this quantity H. And of course, this does assume that the events are independent. So to consider the, to calculate the entropy of an image, in, in images, the events are the possible grade levels. So this could, could be, for example, the values 0 through 255. And we can use the histogram to estimate these probabilities. And then compute the entropy by summing the probability, which we get from the histogram, time log base 2 of the probability. So this quantity, number of bits per pixel, is the best we can do as far as compression. If we, if we don't consider uh, correlations between the values but treat every pixel as independent, um, this is the theoretical minimum we can do. Let's take an example. Um, if we have eight gray levels in our image and all of them have the same probability, namely 1 over 8th, then the entropy H is just um, summing these up. So I sum from uh, the probability. They're all the same, so I get 8 for that. The probability is 1 over 8. And the log base probability, the log, log base 2 of um, probability 1 over 8 is just uh, negative 3 because 2 to the minus 3 is, is uh, 1 over 8. So this becomes a minus 3. So the total entropy is 3 bits in this case, which is really, you know, what we would have if we did not, um, uh, if we just straightforwardly encoded these with 3-bit uh, binary numbers. Another case, let's say we have 8 gray levels, but only one of them has a non-zero probability. Let's say P, P1. In that case, H is, um, if I take all the ones that are zeros, I have seven of those, and log base two of zero. And then I have one um, with probability one and log base two of a one. So this is zero, and a log base two of a 1 is a 0 as well. So this is just uh, 0 bits. And again, it's because 
you know, we already know what the uh, probability, what, what the values of a pixel uh, in the images are without even looking at them. So it carries no information.